हेलो इंजीनियर्स वेलकम टू अनदर कॉन्सेप्चुअल लर्निंग सेशन ऑन सिविल निर्माण सो टुडे वी गन लर्न डिजाइन ऑफ कॉम्प्रेशन मेंबर्स हाउ दे आर डिजाइन एंड ऑल्सो वी विल वेरीफाई अ क्विक सैम्पल प्रॉब्लम विद स्टैड सो यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड हाउ यू कैन को रिलेट योर कॉम्प्रेशन मेंबर थियोरी टू द एक्चुअल स्टैट कैलकुलेशन बट बिफोर गोइंग टू द स्टैट पार्ट I want you to understand and we will have a quick look on design of compression members so we will have a quick summary on design of compression members so first of all let's understand what is a compression member so basically compression members are commonly used as columns in building structures cords or it can be webs in trusses right or braces in a frame structure now the maximum strength of a steel compression member depends to a large extent on the member length and its end support conditions now see now the next important part understand its classification so basically depending on its length it can be categorized in a three way short compression member intermediate compression member or the long compression member usually short compression members fail by crushing or yielding intermediate compression member fails by yielding and buckling and long compression member usually fails by elastic buckling so here from the figure uh, you can understand a little, little bit about the failure part right and i have identified the failure segment here now you see usually buckling occurs when a straight or homogeneous centrally loaded column subjected to an axial compression suddenly undergoes bending now let's understand how column buckles right now here you can observe a uh, two sketches which i have represented as a short column and long column now see short columns have large lateral dimension compared to the length of the member and its tendency to buckle under compression load is very less because of its shorter length right so it usually fails by the compression yield or crushing in case of the short column now try to see this figure for the long column now from the sketch itself you can observe that for the long columns the length of the member is larger to its lateral dimension and it has higher slenderness ratio now see with increase in the length to radius of gyration tendency to buckle increases which will reduce its overall capacity of the member now usually this buckling strength affects by the first case residual stresses and the accidental eccentricity of load now see residual stresses means uh, when these hot roll sections are manufactured due to the temperature variations it has some residual stresses and based on that their classification is done in terms of class a b and c we will discuss this further uh, from the codal provisions itself so basically from this to comparison you will get a little bit idea that the longer the column for the same cross section greater it becomes tendency to buckle and smaller become its load carrying capacity right so the tendency of the column to buckle is usually measured by its slenderness ratio right you have heard this term slenderness ratio which is usually denoted by kl divided by r now one more important aspect to understand in the compression member c columns are more critical than tension member why because see the bending of the tension member uh, let's understand this uh, through this uh, now one more important now one more important aspect one more important aspect to understand is that the compression member that means columns are more critical than tension members why so let's see uh, that uh, if if i show you the segment
so let's see if I show you the segment let's say for this particular frame building now the bending of the tension members probably will not be serious as the tensile loads tends to straighten those members right in case of the beams but bending of this compression member is serious because the compressive loads will tend to magnify the bending in those members now let's say if your column is get buckled or let's say it gets bent the whole structure will, co will collapse right so this is one of the most important aspects uh, that you can uh, remember as a strong column weak beam segment because see even if a slightly bent compression member is placed in the structure it may have significant bending moment whereas the tension member will try to straighten out as a horizontal segment so for the compression member first of all we need to understand how the column is behaving and how it is failing now again in the compression member failure we have these three categories of buckling let's understand that so the first one is the flexural buckling also it is called as a Euler buckling now see it is the primary type of buckling in which the members are subjected to bending or flexure when they become unstable so here is the representation of this flexural buckling the next one is the local buckling so this particular occurs when some part or parts of a particular section from a column they are so thin that they buckle locally in compression before other modes of buckling can occur so you can observe this local buckling portion as well and the next one is the torsional buckling so in this case this columns fails by twisting that means torsion or the combined effect of torsion and flexural buckling so from this you now get a clear idea how the compression member behaves what is its category of the failure now, now let's move on which category of the section profiles we can use as in compression member right so in theory numerous shapes can be used for the columns to resist the given loads however from the practical point of view right that is for the construction and the fabrication point of view the number of possible solution is severally limited by the keeping in mind the section availability that is sections available in the market the type of connection that you're gonna utilize in your structure right that is the connection type that is beam to column or beam to beam and the type of structure in which the section to be used we have categorized few sections profiles that are commonly used in a compression member so they are highlighted over here so in the first sketch uh, these are the common compression members okay for the lightweight structures that is single angle double angle T and channel sections right apart from that you can use W shape columns I sections pipe or round tubes square tubes or box sections apart from that this particular I sections can be compiled with the plates or channels and you can create a built up section as well for the heavy loads so now you get a clear idea about the compression member its behavior its failure common cross section profiles that we generally use as a compression member so in the next sessions we gonna understand the codal provisions that are used for the compression member design its terminology and each parameter that affects the compression member design also after the quick summary of the this compression member codal provision parameters we will quickly verify a sample problem with stat calculations so stay tuned for more updates.